Nikon 1. Nikon 1 series. Now this is Nikon's very first uh, foray into mirrorless cameras. Now this camera came out in 2011 and it's their first mirrorless camera and it has a CX sensor, what Nikon dub a CX, which is a like the common sensors nowadays with a one inch sensor. That is what this Nikon's got in it. Now this sensor is turn that off. This sensor is 13.2 millimeters wide by 8.8 .8 millimeters and it has a crop factor of 2.7 so when you like this camera come out with this little 10 to 30 mil lens which is the equivalent of 27 to 81 millimeters on a full frame now this little lens here they're retractable lenses so they're quite compact um, but you just need a little, there's a little button on the side here to open up to its working distance of 10 mil. So that is at 10 mil and that zoomed out to 30 mil. So there's not much. Now it's quite light. Um, like I say, you can see it in my hand here, it's quite small. But unfortunately, this lens is not working. Its aperture is stuck at its minimum this one has a fault in it so I can't actually use it so I'm using the 30 to 110 lens on this at the moment and the photos in this video are all from this lens this itself is a retractable lens as well so the button to open it up and it actually turns it on as well so as soon as you, I turn that off, as soon as I rotate the lens to its working distance, the camera comes on. So it's ready to, to shoot so you can have it off while you're walking around. And when you're ready to shoot, just push the button and then extend the lens and you're ready to shoot. So it is 106 millimeters wide. 61 millimeters high and 29 millimeters deep that's without a lens and for you guys in america that is 4.17 inches wide by 2.4 inches high and 1.17 inches thick so by the time you put a lens on it um, that yeah that extends the the depth of it a little bit but you can get smaller more compact lenses there's there's a range of lenses for these things um, uh, the lenses there is a number of one series lenses available for this uh, I've got a little note here on some of them there's two weather sealed lenses for there because there's an AW model which is completely waterproof which you can actually submerge it completely in water um, but the lenses the available lenses for the one series cameras they range from like a 6.7 to 13 millimeter lens um, which is equivalent to 18 to 35 to like a 70 to 300 lens so you imagine if 70 to 300 lens on that and that is equivalent to 189 to 810 millimeters. So for a small, I mean, I'm not sure how big these that 70 to 300 is, but in a small compact body like that, to get 800 millimeter um, distance in such a small compact camera is a pretty amazing. But there is four primes, and all up there's 30. 13 lenses available for the system you can also get an adapter to put um, I don't have one here on the table at the moment but you can get an adapter on these to put a f-mount lens on 
So if you wanted to use, utilize your F-mount lenses, you can get in the adapter and shoot with all the F-mount lenses. So shutter speeds on this Nikon 1 series camera, like this is the, the I forgot to mention it at the start of it, didn't I? This is the, the J1, this is the original one that came out. Now there's, uh, they went all up, all the way up to J5. This has got a 10.1 megapixel sensor in it. And the later ones come out with, uh, I believe, a 20 megapixel sensor. Yeah, 20.8 megapixel sensor in the, the last one. In 2018, they ended this, this series. But anyway, this has got a 10 megapixel sensor in it. Um, it can do full HD video, up to 30 frames per second, and also 720 at 60 frames per second. 640 by 240 pixels at 400 frames a second and 320 by 120 at 1200 frames a second but yeah, personally I wouldn't I wouldn't use that um, I haven't got any video samples um, for you to, to show you today all I've got at the moment is JPEGs I'm not I wasn't really interested in it for the video side of things because I knew the, the video side wouldn't wouldn't be that great um, I wanted to review a small mirrorless camera from Nikon and this is their very first one so now it does have a pop-up flash <laughs> it's very small little button on the side <laughs> it's a cute little thing it's a little button a little pop-up flash I don't know how useful that will be but never mind this um, has one SD card slot and it's in the bottom with the battery um, it only is UHS-1 so it's not um, the fastest car then again in 2011 you weren't really recording high resolution photos or 4k video or anything like that so you didn't need UHS-2 anyway so this has 73 focus points uh, around this around the dot around the sensor and it has a mixture of phase detect and contrast detect points focus on it is Reasonably quick. I wouldn't say it's like the quickest like I mean it is at this at this point uh, What 11 years old it came out in 2011 and is now 2022 so Although it's reasonably quick. It's not like lightning fast like the latest Nikons or Sony's um, or Canon's but then again like I say it is 11 years old now it also has um, an XP3 processor in it and it has like picture controls in it and like the um, the D lighting that Nikon is um, utilizing in all their DSLRs mirrorless cameras um, so it has a bit of control over your, your highlights and shadows and you know saturation and those sorts of things anyway. But I mean like it's, it's small enough to hold in your hand like that. So you, you go for a walk and holding it like that. It's quite comfortable, it's not too weighty. The body, I'll put on my scales here, 277 grams, that's with the battery and memory card in it. The lens in this, 176 grams. So all up, 452 grams. So less than half a kilo uh, in weight. Um, so I mean that's, that's pretty manageable if you're going on a long walk for instance and you wanted to carry a camera but you didn't want something like this sort of thing which is over a kilo well over a kilo and that's the Z6 with a 24 to 70 on it so as you can see I'll show you the differences between the Nikon 1 and the Z50 so that's the difference between Nikon's first mirrorless camera with a one inch sensor and their mirrorless camera with a DX or crop sensor, APS-C sensor in it. 
and then <laughs> you get the weighty Z6. So yeah, this is the the difference between the two cameras, the, the height of it and the depth of it with the lenses on it. So that's a, the that's a difference between the two. So yeah, oh. it's not that weighty, but I mean, when you compare it to that, you can't throw that round, that Z6. <laughs> not that it would anyway. So like I was saying in there that, this was introduced in 2011 and they ended the run of these Nikon 1 series um, cameras with uh, the, the J5 and that ended production in early 2018 and, and later that year they introduced the Z6 and the Z7. So Nikon have had a bit of experience with mirrorless cameras although a lot of people have forgotten about these small cameras but they still take pretty good images so I hope you like that little um, time travel back to 2011 to show you one of the cameras that um, the mirrorless camera that Nikon released and we'll end this video with a slideshow of images taken with this 10 megapixel camera and this 30 to 110 millimeter lens I forgot to mention at the beginning the 30 to 110 is equivalent in full frame to 81 to 297 millimeters so there's a variety of images taken throughout the fo focal range uh, I have up on screen all the details of the images what focal length and shutter speed and etc now the all images are taken straight out of the camera the only thing I've done with them is to crop them to 16 by 9 I haven't edited the images in any way shape or form other than just a crop so you'll see them straight out of camera as they are JPEGs so I hope you enjoyed that little um, video of this one series camera look at back look back at uh, an older camera from Nikon and um, the next video I'll have up, have up will be um, a comparison between Nikon's Z50 and the camera that I'm shooting on now which is the Sony ZV-E10. So there'll be a comparison with the respective kit lenses on, 16 to 50, both of them. Um, the video quality and the image quality of the stills photos, handling, size, weight, all that sort of thing. So we're going to direct comparison between both those cameras. So I hope you look forward to seeing that and I hope you like this video. Uh, post a comment down below and subscribe and like the video if you, if you um, liked it. And we'll see you again on the next one. Thank you all for watching.